Great. So good evening, everyone. Um, uh, it's great to see you all back at SOAS in time three of Japan Research Center lecture series. Uh, my name is Satna Suzuki. Um, I belong to East Asian Languages and Cultures Department, uh, specializing in uh, modern Japan and also advanced Japanese. Um, I am actually standing in for the chair of the JLC, Fabio Gigi. Uh, who sadly can't be here because of a family bereavement, and he sent his apologies. He would have liked to be here, obviously. So I'm very honored to introduce the uh, speaker for tonight, uh, Professor Kawakami Masa, Masa Nao. Nao. Sorry. <laughs> I always say Masa, yeah, so yes. Masa Nao, yes. uh, from the uh, School of Economics and Management at uh, Hyogo University, Japan. So uh, Professor Kawakami is currently a visiting professor at JRC, and he has published many, many books on <laughs> 11 books. Yeah, 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 yeah. Books, many yes. books in my view, <laughs> um, on uh, modeling and uh, business modeling and also monetization. And he has also been an advisor for many major uh, companies, you know, entertainment companies and manufacturers and also something else yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah things like that but anyway <laughs> his talk tonight uh yeah so he he's trying to reinvent and create business models right yeah yeah, yeah. That's right. so his talk tonight bears the title of uh leveraging the strengths of japanese companies and your um and you uh to pro uh, profit doing what you mm -hmm. love sounds great so please do Sheet. take it away thank you now my turn okay <laughs> Uh, so, uh, how are you? Yeah, uh, I'm delighted to address you uh, uh, all today. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you for having me as a JLC member and uh, yeah, Satona and uh, Fabio. Uh, unfortunately, he's not here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and uh, thank you for uh, Soros University of London. Okay. Now, today I'm here to uh, uh, talk to you about uh, innovative business thinking. Yes. And uh, by the end of this speech, uh, you will be familiar with the characteristics of uh, Japanese companies and Japanese attitude towards business, and uh, more importantly, how to overcome them. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, uh, learning these things will enable you to uh, make a living doing what you love. Mm -hmm. So before we get into uh, theoretical things, listen to this story. Long time ago, in a rural part of Japan. Yeah. Have this kind of an image of something? <laughs> no? <laughs> yes. Uh, there was an engineer. He had graduated from high school and uh, set up a small signage company. He worked so hard and had enough customers to make a living. Like many young Japanese, he really likes and, uh, pop culture and knows more about the games and the animations. And uh, so, uh, then anyway, yeah, he believed it was just, just a hobby, not a job like other young people. So, but his uh, passion for pop culture was growing uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. So one day, uh, he consulted a business expert about his thoughts and uh, the expert has some surprising work for him. You should make a business out of what you want to do and then figure out how you are going to uh, make money from it. You need some tips on that. So we'll figure it out together. Yeah, I'm your father. Just joking, yes. <laughs> he struggled to come up with uh, his own yeah, profiting way. Six months later, he launched his first business in Japanese pop culture. He became the world's, uh, world's most famous designer in pop culture especially in the cosplay field. You know cosplay? Okay. And nowadays, he's joining not only the animation or game projects, uh, but musicals or films. Finally, uh, he has got to generate profits while making a world better place uh, through what he loves. And both uh, sales and profits have almost doubled since then. And they all lived happy ever after. Yeah. The thing is, uh, yeah, this story is... Uh, Based on the truth, the engineer is named Takumi Ori. Yeah, Takumi is his first name and Ori is a surname. Now let's look at himself in depth. So uh, he was born 
and grew up in Takasago city of Hyogo, near Kobe, in Japan. He started his factory for industrial signage, which is for restaurants, uh, retailers, or companies, yeah, and so on. He called a B2, yeah, yeah, that business so-called a B2B, yeah, a business to business, yes. And not just his business, as the number of customers increases, uh, gradually the competition uh, increases and uh, endangers profits. In the meantime, he became a bit more uh, motivated by the business. Uh, because what he really loves is not producing sinuses. He talked to a business expert, and uh, he swung his business towards what he really wanted to do. And uh, he named his uh, core business, yeah, Takumi Armory. You know, okay, Armory, yes. Yeah, and I'm a creator, I'm a maker or something like that. So uh, back then, cosplayers use uh, real gum made of heavyweight material like steel. And they only uh, use cheap look armor because of their portability. So like that, yeah, she's a, a cosplayer. But uh, actually, she's uh, also a uh, vice president of uh, Takumi's company. Yes, now. And... Uh, yeah, and uh, he uh, could uh, succeed to uh, produce real look lightweight armor made of plastics. Mm -hmm. And uh, why he has so many competitors in signage. Yeah, like that. And uh, absolutely no one in cosplay. He didn't just uh, pro yeah, propose a product. He thought about, uh, yeah, he, he thought ahead about, uh, about uh, yeah, how it would make uh, a profit for the company as a whole. And uh, take a look at these armors, and his workplace has entirely changed. In his hands, bowling every day becomes much more interesting. So, and uh, yeah, in his hands, yeah, the for example, yeah, thanks to him, uh, we can buy a cosplay armor made by Takumi at a convenience store at a uh, 7 Eleven. You know, <laughs> it's not, yeah, I'm not joking. Yes. It is, yeah, I'm serious. And uh, as you can see, uh, above the bookshelf, bookshelf, and uh, yeah, you can see the armors. And uh, again, in his sense, boring everyday life, uh, everyday life can be becomes more, uh, yeah, much more interesting. So, and uh, in his sense, yeah, during pandemic, we are forced to set partitions in uh, schools or yeah, offices like this, yeah, same as source. Mm -hmm. This partitions, yes. And a normal partition is something like this, isn't it? They are uh, annoying and uh, bothersome. It seems like a uh, pleasant visit. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So in his hands, this is what happens. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, someone in Saku. Yeah, Mahojin in Japanese, yes. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he is Takumi, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his hands, yes, this, this is a, oh, yeah, what happens. So uh, you may summoning, uh, you may summon something evil or fantastic, yeah, by this partition, yes. And his ideas even have uh, pandemics on their side. Uh, yes, RPG partition. <laughs> yes, tatakau, gogyo, hanasu, unazuku, nigeru, dosuru, yes. And uh, yeah, now, now he was, uh, yeah, but, uh, Takumi, yes. He's like a super saiyan or <laughs> like that. And uh, manga partition, yes, like that. Right? Yes, yeah, finally he became a uh, monster or something like that. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, and a uh, normal partition uh, costs about uh, 30 pounds or, yeah, something. And uh, the Takumi is, on the other hand, Costs around 120. Yes, this is four times the price of an ordinary partition. Yes, but these are like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Customization available for 150. Yeah, how about it? Yes, so. And uh, there's only one reason why can why can he develop something like this? It is because he is doing what he really loves. And he is now famous all over the world. He is, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, this manga, I know, uh, the, is a 
animation magazine in France. And uh, yeah, so popular magazine. So now he is so well known that uh, animation magazine France uh, has taken up his business these days. Yeah, like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So famous uh, cosplay uh, maker. So he appears invincible. Yeah, in this field. His secret to profiting is not just to sell products at higher prices. And he planned to generate profits, uh, make himself IP, you know, the intellectual property. Yes, himself is intellectual property. So and get uh, involved in larger projects while selling these high margin products. High margin products have been bringing him enough cash for research. Mm -hmm. And this project, uh, and this profit generation logic has worked well for these nine years. And finally, you know this one? Yeah, great, right. thank you. Uh, he finally, he participated in the animation project uh, with Square Enix called Nia Automata. Yeah, adapted, yeah, adapted into uh, from the same game title. And uh, as a number creator, designing real weapons and uh, converting them to 2D. Yes. So uh, he has been working with uh, Square Enix and Aniplex. You know Aniplex? Yes. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, his works. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, these are his, his works. And Aniplex. Yeah, Aniplex is uh, yeah, also well known for their smash hit, you know? So-called uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Yes. Uh, Demon Slayer in English. Okay. <laughs> So now his skills in armor production were instrumental in the realism of the animations. Besides, uh, he was involved in the stage production of the musical W7 uh, Casino Royal, you know, Casino Royal. And in Japan, the Takarazuka Kageki. Yes. In the stage adaptation of the James Bond film, then is his technologies and thought and specialties. So far, uh, he expanded in his business into uh, the uh, peripheral areas while focusing on cosplay gear and game profit as a whole. This is his idea of profit innovation and, he, and has been uh, successful. And so far, this is, yeah, this is the event title of my presentation. So uh, have you all this yeah, all been uh, attracted enough? Yeah. Okay, so it works. And uh, what I want to tell you about is, uh, yes, we always think of uh, living with what we love, but uh, just focusing on what we love doesn't make a living, except for a few extraordinary people. Extraordinary people are the players in the top 1% or less. Yeah, every field. They are either gifted, brilliant, uh, very lucky, or all of the above. Unfortunately, this is the truth. How should the other 99% make a living? So, yeah, how do you achieve it? What do you think of? I have a solution. Business model. That is a yeah thought I, I called a business model. This is a theme uh, I've been researching and advising practitioners on. I believe it works for everybody in this hall right now. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, for professors or the college student or yeah business people or yeah everybody. I hope it it, it will be uh, helpful for you to think about your own life. And uh, finally, main title again. So, by the way, let me introduce uh, myself briefly. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm Master Kawakami, and uh, I'm a scholar and a uh, yeah, professor at the University of Hyogo and a visiting scholar at Soros University of London. And uh, I'm an advisor. So uh, I've been uh, involved with the projects as an advisor for uh, yeah, or director supporting their business modeling. Uh, 30 companies or more, yeah, I've been working with uh, 
Uh, for example, the automobile companies in Japan or electronics companies or appliance companies in Japan, and resort, a resort hotel or entertainment company or sports company, yes. And in, in, in Europe, yeah, I've been working with a shoemaker in Germany. In, uh, in Germany. So, and uh, or the watchmaker in Switzerland. So, and to tell the truth, and uh, Takumi's advisor was me. In here, finally, the foreshadowing was recovered. <laughs> uh, maybe today uh, Takumi is there and uh, on it, uh, yeah, online. Maybe <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway, and now I am so uh, also uh, giving uh, advices to four companies in London now, including uh, skyrocketing startups. And I'm also an author of eleven books regarding business model and monetizing. Yes, yes, that's it. And uh, and the reason why I research these things is, yeah, long story short. Uh, my father was uh, an uh, entrepreneur and a proprietor. When I was twenty, uh, yeah, about to age, uh, my father went bankrupt. And what do you think of? Yeah, I was so shocked. So that brought me to research on business. However, uh, we have now yeah, we've had uh, no successful logics on the business model or monetizing yet. The theory is uh, not easy for a practitioner to use. And then uh, I'm keep uh, fighting until business model thinking becomes the norm. So my motto is uh, simple but pragmatic tools for everybody. Like uh, building this church, there's no end to it, yes. <laughs> it is my great pleasure to have found such a tough life's work like uh, Andrew Gaudi, yes. And now uh, here are some simple business model ideas I've systemized so far. In a nutshell, business model is a framework for making money. Yes, it was, yeah, it was uh, remembering, isn't it? So it enables companies to profit while satisfying customers. You must want to please someone else with what you love. You should be what you really love. We call it customer value proposition, abbreviated as a CVP. Yes. Including this, a business model is made up of three elements with the initials PRO, PRO. Profiting means make a living. So profit generation. And if we want to implement a plan successfully, then you need to create a process. Yes, it's better to keep it in mind as a triple plus, yes. From business model perspective, yeah. This perspective, yes. I have nothing but concerns about Japanese companies. The question is very simple. Where have they disappeared to? So take a look at the ranking. Uh, you see this ranking ad uh, take a look at this ranking. More than 30 years ago, Japanese companies were really, really, really strong. Yes, in terms of market value, 21 of the world top 30 companies are uh, Japanese companies, you know, the orange ones. Yeah, great. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a golden age of Japanese companies. On the other hand, what happened? What what had ha happened to uh, this thirty four years later? Yeah, look at the ranking from this year. Where are the orange ones? It means they've uh, completely lost their position in the world. Where on earth have they disappeared to? All right, let's zoom out a bit more on the same ranking. Yeah, that way we could find J Japanese companies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, this is the one. Uh, to begin with, uh, the 1989 ranking shows that, incidentally, 32 out of 50 companies were Japanese ones. Mm -hmm. I have to say again, wow. 
they are not there after all. How sad. Uh, in 2023, the most valuable Japanese company is Toyota. But even so, it is still sadly ranked uh, 50 to 52nd in the world. Even though Toyota has sold the most cars all over the world for three years in a row, somehow Tesla is ranked in uh, seventh. Yes, Toyota is ranked in the 22nd. And uh, yeah. Uh, 10 million cars, 10 million automobiles are sold. <clears throat> but uh, Tesla, yes, uh, Tesla is ranked in uh, seventh, and uh, which sells uh, only 12% of total sales. It is the only company in the top, five, top 50 in the automotive uh, industry. This mystery will be solved later in this lecture. And uh, anyway, uh, such a sad result for the Japanese. As the example Toyota shows here, and even though Japanese products or contents are still strong. So, yeah. Even in London, we can see Europe playing PS5 or eating sushi, driving Toyota's automobiles, and uh, enjoying Japanese contents, yeah, Kimetsu no Yaiba, yes. Then, how come they disappeared? The answer is uh, Japanese companies have not fully harvested their profits. I'm not saying that uh, they should make a living from other businesses, but saying they can monetize other parts of what they are doing now. This is my message today. and. Uh, when it comes to Japanese product, yeah, what is your image? Yeah, it is, yeah, in my opinion, it is process, which makes the greatest contribution to the result of Japanese companies. Process is the very strongest of the Japanese company. It consists of uh, good imitation, manual dexterity, teamwork, uh, patience and uh, punctuality. Yes, uh, but as you probably know by now, uh, this is not enough to make a business work well. So, yeah, the process, yeah, as I told you earlier, yeah, from the business model framework, process is not enough to work your business. Yeah, work your way of life. Now, Japanese companies have been recognizing the importance of customer value proposition. It determines the qualities of products, so it's being strongly promoted in the name of marketing. Now question, what is a component left behind in the business model framework? Do you remember? Do you remember? OK. Yes, profiting. This is a very missing component in the success of Japanese companies. Remarkably enough, uh, somehow Japanese companies have been still disregarding profiting. Perhaps profiting may sound selfish and demeaning in Japan. Yes, moke in Japanese. But on the other hand, uh, the top 30 companies in the 2020s are also making a difference to profit generation. This is, yeah, uh, that is uh, the disruptors innovate profiting, which I named profit innovation. Yes, innovation is not just about a proposition or product or process. Yeah, product innovation is easy to understand. Yeah, uh, the iPhone or, yeah, is innovation. So yeah, or apps, Instagram or something like that. Yeah, you can see, yeah, everywhere, everything everywhere, yeah. And but uh, and uh, yeah, uh, process is also understandable. Yes, and uh, just in time, you know, Toyota, Toyota's, yeah, at a, uh, 
uh, yeah, building the automobile systems. Yes, the efficiency. Yes, the process. But uh, yeah, profiting is yeah left behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but it is because yeah, uh, mm -hmm, uh, many of them uh, the practice profit innovation in secret. So uh, the, uh, after this, uh, you will see the example of U.S. companies as success successful cases, but uh, not because I believe they are the best. Yes. But uh, yeah, and uh, many of them uh, practice and uh, profit innovation in secret. In, in fact, now, all we need is uh, to learn growing companies have been changing their profit patterns dynamically. Then I want to share with about what to do is uh, to get an idea of profit innovation. Let's take a look at uh, how to generate profits from the proposition or what you love. From this part onwards, uh, we will look at uh, what Japanese companies should do. This is actually a, a useful way for you and me to think about how we approach our work. So how to profit? A question, thinking. If you want a profit, what do you do? What do you do? So sell products? Yes. Good answer. Yeah, it, it's a good answer. Yes. Sell products. Yes, product selling is a way uh, to make money. Yeah, profit is uh, price minus cost. This is a fundamental principle, but it's not the only way to profit. And it's old school, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, everybody likes this profit generation logic. So how to profit? But uh, the world is already full of uh, different profit patterns. For example, uh, dynamic pricing or byproduct, yeah, so well-known uh, profit patterns, the matchmaking or subscription, or membership, and a freemium. You know freemium? Have you ever heard of? No? Uh, but yeah, absolutely, you know. Uh, open your mobile phones and uh, count the number of apps you haven't paid for. Yeah. Why you 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 didn't you didn't pay, but uh, the companies make a profit. Why? That is a key to uh, a freemium. So uh, those are yeah the most popular profit pattern in digital startups. Yeah, free and premium. Somebody paid the premium. Yes, but uh, almost yeah all people uh, don't pay. Yes, that's freemium. We have already known some kind of profiting. So uh, wouldn't you like to know uh, how many profit patterns there are in total? Even if only the most prominent ones? I have systemized them logically. This is one. 30. Yes. These are typical patterns that somebody has already developed so far. And I arranged them in my book. Knowing only these things will ensure that you are not left behind in time. Subscription. Yes, subscription is there. Uh, 12, 13, 14. Yes, subscription. Dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. And uh, Flamium is uh, another 19. And uh, yeah, uh, membership, uh, uh, mem membership 19, yeah, the, the freemium at, at 12, uh, 20, yes. Sir. All up here in the diagram. And um, some of these uh, might have uh, already have already been adopted by you or your friends, a student or a teacher. For example, office worker. Office worker, yeah, adopted 12. Because uh, the companies pay, yeah, you uh, at, uh, at monthly, is it's, it's a subscription, and a part-time worker fourteen, 
14 is uh, uh, pay as you go. Yeah, uh, pay as office uses or something like that. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we, we can see uh, the, yeah, uh, the museums uh, the, in London and the adapts uh, 20, yeah, premium. Uh, the, in London, yeah, free free museum, but uh, yeah, yeah, you will pay the, the, for the exhibition or something like that. So it's a premium. And uh, yeah, museums are uh, membership, yes. And uh, but in, uh, paying advance, yeah, annual membership fee or something like that. For 28, a small premium, yes, it's a, a donation or something like that. And college, yes, of course, 12. Yeah, you're paying a tuition. Yeah, and uh, seasonally or, or, yeah, yeah, annually or something like that. So, yes, and uh, anyway, uh, if you were study one by one every day, you can master these 30 patterns in a month. Yeah. A detailed description of these uh, follows. Okay. Here's the explanation of the 30. If you're interested in the, these patterns, and, uh, you can take a photo, okay? I'll use that time to give you some tips. The point is uh, disruptors know different ways of making money and they are profiting not only from the main target, not only from the main products, not only from the right now. Does it make sense? Yes, this is the way to, uh, yeah. Uh, create uh, the new, brand new profit patterns. Then, how about Japanese companies? Yes, how about Japanese companies? Okay, so uh, almost all former top ranked Japanese companies, yeah, is uh, manufacturing companies and uh, have been adapting, yes, just one and number one. Actually, it is the most conservative way uh, to recoup their cost. That's Japan. I'm impressed at all. Yes. Yeah. They don't like laws or waste at all. Yeah. Uh, or we. <laughs> okay. So in, in this way, uh, they have uh, such uh, success stories. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, product selling is not the only way to generate profits. Uh, despite all these patterns, Japanese companies tend to stick to just one. We still have at least 20, 29 ways. And this tendency is not limited to product selling. The same is true of other industries. Yeah, we can see other industries. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the same thing in other industries. So companies in the same industry tend to adopt the same one pattern. Yes, one industry, one pattern. This is known as an industry practice. In Japan, uh, where there is a strong peer pressure, so uh, we feel comfortable when we follow convention. For example, publishers of manga, you know, the Kimetsu no Yaiba, Shouga, uh, Shueisha, or yeah, uh, poke, Pokemon, so the Shogakan, or yeah, something like that. Publishers manga have adapted 22 yeah, contents, yeah, intellectual pick, uh, properties. And such tendencies are not limited to Japan. Yeah, in yeah, 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 British companies, or yeah, maybe British publishers, maybe it's the same, but are often found in industries that lag uh, behind in innovation. By the way, how about the UK? Yeah, UK company. Look at the UK companies that we all know. Marks and Spencers, Bubbly or Cotton Mason or AstraZeneca, a pharmaceutical company. Yeah, they are surprisingly em uh, employing number one. On the yes, in the manufacturing industry, and even the UK companies tend to adopt number one. It makes me wonder if the UK has the same problems as Japan. 
potentially. Yeah, I'd be worried. Now, what should we do? Take a look at the short cases of uh, successful companies. Yes, U.S. companies better. Yeah, I'm sorry, U.S. company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are good at profiting. So, yeah, for example, a yeah, very short case, Dolby. You know, Dolby introduced Creative Cloud. You know, so because Dolby wanted to transform their profiting originally from one to twelve. Yes, yes, that's it. Maybe it's in uh, 2013. Yes, they drastically changed their profit patterns. And uh, another example is, uh, yes, we all know Apple. Yeah. Apple, uh, what is Apple famous for? Yes, iPhone. Yes, Satuna, yes, iPhone. <laughs> So pop quiz, what is the second largest uh, category of uh, sales after uh, iPhone? Now let's take a survey, okay? Make sure you raise your hand and for one of them. And there are four options, okay? iPad, Macintosh, Wearables, and uh, including uh, watches, yes, watch, yes, and, uh, and other. Okay, raise your hand if you, yeah. Okay, raise your hand if you think uh, it's an iPad. Thank you, thank you. And uh, raise your hand uh, if you think it's a Mac, Macintosh. Oh, thank you, thank you. Raise your hand if you think it's a watch or, uh, yeah, available. No? Okay, so, okay. And uh, uh, raise your hand if you uh, think it's something else. Well, great, thank you. Yes, the answer is uh, something else. <laughs> it's service, you know, service. So, uh, the services are, are including uh, uh, Apple Music or iTunes or App Store or uh, Apple TV Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple News. Yeah, something like that. Or, uh, yeah, Apple Music, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah that, that's it. And uh, on top of that, service is more profitable than pro products, yes. Because uh, uh, this is, uh, yeah, products and uh, sales, and uh, yeah, this is uh, the, uh, Apple's income statement. And uh, we can see the products and uh, uh, the, the sales of products and the cost of sales. The, the margin is uh, almost 30%. But yeah, on the other hand, service is almost 70%. So uh, the, the profit pillar is a service now. Yes. By the way, you know this news, sir. Uh, Financial Times uh, four days ago? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, and uh, as you know, Apple, uh, Apple has announced that it has entered the banking sector, the financial sector, you know? Yeah. So this is a part of its strategy to enhance its services. Yes, service. So in short, they once adapted uh, product selling. And when they invented iTunes, changed their logic to 20, uh, 14, pay as you go subscription. After that, iCloud, Apple Music, and Apple TV Plus, or uh, yeah, something like that, your uh, app stores, yeah, had got to be a popular. popular. Uh, they introduced flat rate subscription. You use the Apple Music or yeah, something like that. So, and now they are running their business by membership, which combined product with service. Yes. So, uh, yeah, and uh, another example, the Amazon. So what is Amazon uh, the famous for? Yes, online store. Yes, buy something every day. Yeah, that's right. But uh, from a profit view, yeah, but Amazon's uh, online store only breaks even. So, only AWS, you know AWS, 
the infrastructure service, yeah, rental, the, uh, there is a, a, a server rental service, yes. Only AWS has been profitable in recent years. As you know, B2B infrastructure service. So when viewed in terms of profit, yeah, we can see that, yeah. So you so different uh, the scenery. Mm -hmm. So in short, Amazon has transformed uh, its online stock profit generation from uh, originally from uh, the product sales to long tail. Yes, uh, it's yeah, it's a uh, variety of products. Yes, and client membership. Yeah, you subscriber, client membership. Yeah, Prime Student or something like that. So, and it has a huge leap forward by uh, developing into uh, 14 by AWS. It is only thanks to AWS that Amazon can exist in terms of profit. Yes. And more example, short, Tesla. Until 2020, Tesla didn't make any profit. At a, yeah, at all, and from automobile sales alone. How did it manage to stay in business during that time? Take a guess. Yeah, the answer is, uh, uh, yeah, that it profited from a carbon credit, you know, carbon credit. Yes, only carbon credit. So Tesla's real profit uh, only from uh, automobile is a, uh, yeah, our uh, losses. <laughs> yes, big mess. Better carbon credit and make money. Yes, that is mystery of Tesla. So in short, uh, yeah, that, that is a uh, uh, Elon Musk. Yeah. So Tesla profited from carbon credit from after making a loss on automobile sales. Sell sales and now and they are able to grow on their own. Tesla invented the pattern to continue to profit from uh, software and services uh, for cars already sold. You know, the Tesla is uh, updating. So Tesla's car, yeah, automobile is updating. So uh, the subscription or something like that. So uh, the combined uh, products uh, with the services. And uh, one more, Marvel. You know Marvel, yes, yes, of course, no, yeah, absolutely no, yes. So uh, Marvel is also a company which has uh, changed the profit pattern drastically. By the way, yeah, it's, a, it's a Avengers or yeah, Iron Man or something like that. So did you know that Marvel once went bankrupt in 1999? Bankrupt, yeah, and uh, so, and please remember this part, okay? Yeah, from the profitability, take a look at Marvel's profitability over the 11 years since its collapse. After the collapse, they started to make a profit by licensing their uh, IPs. You know, X-Men to our 20th Century Fox, Spider-Man to our Sony Pictures Entertainment, and, uh, and so, yeah, and a uh, park for uh, Universal, like that. So, uh, and it was uh, successful because of its uh, affinity with Marvel's customer value proposition. They were able to judge the list of uh, film production and started creating their own films. And uh, yeah, uh, the after clubs, uh, Marvel's IP, yeah, is successful, so was successful. But, uh, and uh, yeah, they were yeah, able to judge the risk of film. And uh, yeah, they and start, uh, started uh, creating their own films. Yeah, that was Iron Man. Yes, as everyone knows well. So ultimately, uh, they achieved uh, some of the most outstanding performance in history. Yes, the always means uh, return sales. Yes. Uh, yes, operating profit, uh, yeah, 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 divided uh, the sales. So, and uh, Marvel was uh, subsequently acquired by Disney for uh, four billion dollars. Yes, uh, twenty-eight. Yes, 
So these are the facts about profit innovation. Yeah, how did you like it? And the Marvel's pass. Yes, this pass. Yes, from our uh, uh, product selling, yeah, the comic comic sales to our uh, uh, IPs. Yes, they are characters. And uh, yeah, actually uh, they are the talent agency of characters. And then and they, and they produce uh, their products on their own. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, so nice uh, and uh, margin and uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and uh, having heard of this, yeah, you uh, naturally want to know about the Takumi's profit innovations, don't you? To tell the truth, Takumi traces the same way of profit innovation as Marvel accidentally. Yes, and it, yeah, from Takumi Koge, yeah, products are in two uh, contents. Yes, Takumi Amali, yeah, and uh, uh, Anen, uh, the multi component means uh, stage production or film production or game production, or something like that. He is uh, actually uh, now a uh, uh, consultant of uh, entertainment uh, industry. So. I would like to say the following, yeah. The patterns are just um, uh, past, innovation, uh, past inventions by entrepreneurs. Patterns continue to increase. Some of them uh, become obsolete. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, simple. Because, uh, yeah, the 30 patterns are like a dictionary. It's like a, it's like a dictionary. So, uh, yeah, same as words, yeah. So, and... Uh, some are yeah continue, uh, continue to increase, and uh, some of them are become obsolete. And uh, entrepreneurs are the people inventing on profit patterns. Yep. So and uh, even more importantly, uh, you are the entrepreneur of uh, your life. So if you feel you are in trouble, uh, try to change profit pattern, and you should create your own profit pattern then you can find a wonderful way of life like Takumi. And uh, yes, and uh, yeah, more importantly, profiting is not a goal. Japanese companies can uh, invent, their, invent their business models from profiting. And a profit innovation is just a trigger, making your business model sharpen up. In the first place, and if you set out to change profit generation, uh, we have to rethink the proposition. Furthermore, if the proposition is changed, the process has to be built from scratch. In this way, uh, the business model is completely changed from the ground up. If this idea is uh, applied to individuals rather than companies, it means that what we need to do in life itself will change dramatically. And in conclusion, something like this. Uh, yeah, if you uh, want to live what you do, what you love, utilize the business model thinking. Profit innovation yeah, tells uh, tells you uh, how to profit from uh, what you love, and the uh, unprecedented ways of profiting bring new propositions, which make your business model extraordinary. And the business ideas working for Japanese companies can also work for you. Having another opportunity, I'll tell you how to create your original profit pattern. Yes, something like this. So if you would like to uh, talk to me about your uh, way of life, uh, don't hesitate, yes. <laughs> to begin with, uh, give me an email, yes. So thank you for your uh, listening and attention. Thank you. That's it.